Hi Sewing Bees, I'm Suki and welcome to the Beehive. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you 10 bonus non-sewing sewing notions. These are things that you may or may not have laying around your house and or are very affordable that you can get at a store down the street. Now what's really cool about these videos, and this is actually number six, I have five other videos that are very similar to this that have the same type of theme of non-sewing sewing notions, but what's really cool about these videos is these are all ideas that you, the YouTube viewer and subscriber, have left in comments. So I really do hope you keep leaving me comments so that we can uh, keep making these videos and I can keep trying these things out to see if they work and then share them with the rest of you all. So without further ado, let's get started. If you've ever stitched jeans, you'll know that there's that real thick seam and it's usually a couple of layers tucked under. I'm just using cotton here. But when you get over to that seam, your presser foot wants to lift up. So let me show you what happens. Let's just demonstrate that first. So do you see how the presser foot is actually not touching anything? So what will eventually happen is you will have skipped stitches or some of the stitches might be longer and then might be shorter. So there are many machines that come with the presser foot that has this little black button. And what you would do is just push it in. Once the presser foot gets to the right height, see I'm gonna push that in and it'll help keep the stitches flat and then the button will release itself once the presser foot is all exactly horizontal at the same time. However, we don't all have that button on our presser foot. And even if we do, sometimes you wanna use other presser feet with this particular technique. So maybe it's not on denim, maybe it's on some decorative wool material. So here's what I wanna show you. There's a little tool, there's a notion called a hump jumper. It's a plastic piece that goes under your foot to keep the foot even, and then you can choose when to remove that hump jumper, the plastic piece, to make sure that your presser feet lays flat. However, in one of my videos, I had shown how to use post-it notes to keep this level, which was great. It was a good suggestion from one of the viewers. And then this last time, somebody had mentioned that they use these little tongue depressors or popsicle sticks. So I thought I would give it a try. So Instead of using the foot and pressing that button this time, we're gonna go ahead and kind of double up our hem. And now do you see how the presser foot is literally like hovering over the material, which is going to cause for those uneven stitches or potentially like skip stitches. Once we can see where the foot is beginning to like lean down, what we're gonna do is sink our needle. I do have a button that allows me to do that. And then you're going to just take the hump jumper and we're gonna, or the <laughs> popsicle stick, and we're gonna lay it underneath the presser foot. So now there's something for the foot to sit, like, like lay on. Now this does take a little bit of careful manipulation so that you don't accidentally stitch the needle through the pieces of wood. However, if you're right in front of your machine, you're gonna be okay, you'll be balanced. Now, if you were going over an even thicker piece of material and you felt like you needed two of these, you could also do that. But see, I don't need the two because it was actually gonna make it lift up higher. So I'm just gonna put it here. And truly, you don't even need the two. You could just get away with the one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the one. Now, once I know with all certainty that I have bypassed the back of my material, which I haven't, I can still see that the presser foot is on the back of the material. But once you know it's past it, then you would raise your foot, remove the popsicle stick, lower the foot, and keep stitching. And now you have nice, even stitches, nothing is skipped. The next idea was rather cool. I had never seen this before and I thought it was kind of clever, but using a traditional deck of playing cards to sew your buttons on. And I kind of got to thinking that this would be really great if you wanted to kind of take buttons along with you as you do some home hand sewing like out and about. Um, and or just kind of collect buttons as you find them, maybe make your own button cards. But I figure there's a couple of ways you can stitch them on there. You can just go ahead and stitch right through with a bunch of threads, like maybe have four threads going through each and then just tie a knot, making it real easy for you to take them off later on. Or go ahead and stitch it just like you would 
an actual button onto a piece of fabric. And then when you go to tie it off, you would just tie it off there. So it's really up to you. I just thought this was kind of a clever idea when you are trying to organize your buttons. Sometimes I get ideas from you all and I'm like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> this has got to be one of them because first of all, this is purchased. I got this from Amazon. Um, honestly, you could have probably found these at any of the home stores or like the cheap dollar stores kind of places, but really it's just a clothes pin bag. Now I have a dryer, so I don't hang things up outside. Although I do miss that like crisp feeling you get from doing that but I don't use a dryer and I, and so maybe that's why I never thought of this, but what this is, is it hangs up when you're putting clothes outside on a line and then you've got a place to put your clothes pins. They just go right in here and this hangs up on the line. No big deal. You can make these too. I'm sure there's gobs of patterns out there to make one. I mean, it's really just a rectangle with a hole in it and a place to put the little hanger. However, this is really just a tip about using a ready-made one using it for scraps and or trash. And then, so like as you're, you could like kind of hang this on the side of your sewing machine or even just kind of hang it up in, like you could even, one of the viewers, cause this was mentioned by a few people, one of the viewers said that they tape this at the top ledge of their table. So here's their table, they tape this down and then they just throw all their scraps in the bag as they are using them. Now what I think is cool about this is, okay, let's just say we got a bunch of scraps in here. I think what's cool is one, it lays flat, right? So this could just very easily slide into one of your drawers so you could keep all of your scraps organized or you could hang it up somewhere in a closet. Again, I think this is such a cool idea and I wish I would have thought of it. But <laughs> That's what these videos are all about, to share the ideas from everybody. In another one of my non-sewing sewing notion videos, I talk about how to thread an eye of a needle with a toothbrush. So be sure to check that out. But when I posted that, somebody had shared in our Facebook fan club that you could also use a little piece of paper. So I had to try this one out because I've never seen this. So you just take like a little square of paper. I'm going to say this is about an inch by an inch. You fold it in half on the angle. So you have a little triangle and then you're going to take your thread and just kind of set it inside the fold of that piece of paper. Now the video showed you pull the thread all the way to the inside corner, that little crease there. And you just take that thread and you go all the way to the inside crease. And then you take the eye of your needle and then you go through that little corner and then you rip off that corner. So I'm gonna show you two ways. I'm gonna show you the way that, that was demonstrated in the video that the viewer showed. So there you go. I tore off the little corner and now my thread is for sure going through the eye of the needle. I gotta say, this is really, really easy. However, your eye has to be large enough to go through two pieces of paper. So just kind of keep that in mind. You might wanna try I don't know, maybe parchment paper might work good too, but this is the technique that was shown to me. So now I'm gonna show you another thing that as I was doing it, it, took me a little while to get it to work, and then I kind of came up with my own way. Same thing, put the thread into the folded crease, and then take the thread and fold it back onto itself. So you kind of have like this right here, where the thread is folded around to the outside. And then same thing, go through there. I don't tear the piece of paper off. I just simply pull the thread right through. And so now the thread is through the eye of the needle. And again, that was really fast. I think that's a cool idea. So just a little one inch square of paper. This is just a post-it note. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. And if you have other tricks on how to thread the eye of the needle, I would love to know those in the comments below. Okay, friends, so this is now the sixth video that we've done on the non-sewing sewing notions, and there's been lots of great ideas and things that you can do with tiny little containers. But this was a first. I hadn't seen anybody mention this, so I wanted to share this with you all. I used the little ground cinnamon because this is like the smallest of my containers. Now, again, you could totally remove the label if you were gonna keep this in your sewing space, but I wanted to keep it on there to show you what I was using. Now, the suggestion was, 
to store bobbins in it for when you go to classes and or when you're working on a project. So this way, if you are gonna be needing three different bobbins or even just one bobbin and you don't want it to be floating around in your sewing kit, you don't wanna bring anything else to carry it, Honestly, this is like the perfect size for these little bobbins. So that was one of the suggestions. Now to top on top of that, somebody else had mentioned that they use these for their bobbins, but they have the bigger, larger Bernina bobbins. And somebody else mentioned they use this container to hold their quilt machine bobbins, like the long arm quilter, I guess. I'm not a quilter, so I can't speak to it. But I had one of these and I'm kind of embarrassed to say that it had been expired. So I went ahead and took all the little cubes of chicken bouillon and I discarded those. And now I cleaned it out and I'm gonna to totally dedicate this to my larger Bernina bobbins. I love this idea. Plus, again, you could remove the label if you wanted. You could paint something pretty on there. I mean, there's so much you could do, but otherwise, just as a little storage container, I think there's so many things you could do with these. And so I would love to know in the comments below what you think else we could do with these containers. This idea came in from a few people, and this is very simply a mail or file organizer and they come in metal or I've seen them in uh, different colors and then I got the one that's clear plastic that way it could kind of go anywhere in my room and it wouldn't make kind of a too big of a color impact and so the idea is that you can hold pretty much anything that you can get into these slots so like rotary cutters and of course various size rulers are gonna work really nice with this. And again, these come in different colors that you can get and all they are is just simply an envelope or mail or file organizer. And, and it takes up a really small footprint and it gets your items for your sewing space really organized. Along the same lines as the mail organizer is the dish rack organizer. This is where you just simply put your plates after you've washed them by hand. And I really like this idea because just like the mail organizer, it will fit your rulers. However, I don't feel like rotary cutters, I, I don't know, I guess it does sit there, but I don't think I would use that you know, because I feel like it's just going to fall out of place. But I did like how the suggested idea was to hold your hoops. So if you do machine embroidery, these hoops get held real nicely. And of course, I guess it would depend on what size hoops you have, how many hoops, you know, etc. But it might be a good way to organize both rulers and hoops. And like I said, this is just very simply a dish rack organizer that you can find in the kitchen department. The next tip came in and I really, again, resonated with it because it is to use the plastic white erasers to remove your stitches once you've removed them with a seam ripper. Now this seam ripper has been around for at least 20, 25 years. When it came out, it had this like advertised little rubber end that will help remove the threads from your material after you've ripped them out with your stitches or after you've removed your stitches, which is, absolutely accurate. In fact, I even have a video on all the details of this particular seam ripper. It's awesome. It really is. However, you know, it's a seam ripper that you have to pay extra for. So if you're looking to save a little extra money, uh, you can totally use one of these little plastic erasers and um, you can use different kinds. I just happen to have one of these from my daughter's school stuff. So here's the concept is that we are going to just remove our stitches and just like, not that this is a lesson on how to use a seam ripper, but just fun fact, once you get your seam started, which we'll do right here, we'll just start our seam. You can actually flip the seam ripper around to the other side so that the ball is facing toward the seam. And then what'll happen is you don't have to worry about the sharp part cutting your material. The ball will prevent that from happening. So now with this particular seam ripper, you would just go back and you would you know, quite literally erase the thread. You would just basically remove the thread from the material. Having done that, let's go ahead and remove this little piece here. We will still use our seam ripper.
So it definitely works. And again, you can get these anywhere, even at the grocery store. I saw these kind. And so let me know in the comments below, what do you think of this little non-sewing sewing notion? What else do you think you could use this plastic eraser for? This next idea, again, I wish I would have thought of this. I think it's so clever, but basically it's using a silverware tray organizer, the ones that you put in your drawer. But instead of putting our silverware, you can do a couple of things. One, you could use it to store notions because obviously it's going to have lots of freedom with that. Another was thread that was suggested. So you could totally use thread for this. But then the last one I thought was probably just the most unique was to use it for when you are cutting strips so that you can keep all of your quilt strips in your different places. Now this particular one I had gotten, I got specifically for this to keep in my sewing space. This one has these pieces that come out so that you can then place different sizes in there, which I thought was really cool. So it's like two inches, four inches, and then obviously as wide as you want it to go. So if you were doing larger, like five by five pieces, or even if you're doing some garment making and you've got smaller pieces that you wanna kind of keep organized and just tidy, you absolutely can do that. So this is a really cool little non-sewing sewing notion. One of these silverware tray organizers that you can do a lot of things with. What else do you think you could put inside here. I would love to know. Let me know in the comments. And the last non-sewing sewing notion for today's video is actually these washable markers. Now this didn't come from a suggestion. It actually came from a question from another one of my videos that's all about different marking pens and pencils. And the question was, can you use the Crayola washable markers on your fabric and then remove it later on. I had to be honest and say, I don't know, I've never done it before, but I'm certainly going to try and figure it out. Once I figured it out, I was like, oh, this is a perfect non-sewing sewing notion. This is great. And best of all, they come in gobs of colors. So we're not limited by just purple or red or black or blue anymore. So I wanted to show you though how this works. And I wanna just point out that this is not designed for fabric. It really isn't. It's designed when your little munchkins are coloring all over themselves and potentially the walls and you can wash it off real clean and quickly and all that. There are instructions here. Basically, it says that if it's on your hands, it's gonna be fine, you know, skin. And then most washable clothing wash promptly in hot wash cycle. So that was the part that kind of got me going, hmm, do I really want to use these if I can only wash the mark off with hot water? Well, I guess it's really up to you based on if you are going to be using this on a material, if it's 100% cotton and ultimately it's gonna get washed fine, sure, try it out. I would just recommend that you test it out and that's all you gotta do. So I did test it. I just did two marks and I have to say that I did follow, I didn't put it in the wash because I was like, well, I don't want it to permanently set. And to me, in my mind, hot wash is gonna make it set. So I just did it under the tap water and I used hot water to remove it and I gotta say, my friends, it actually came out. There's not even any residue. I did notice though, this took, I did it at about maybe like two o'clock in the afternoon, let it set overnight, and when I woke up the next morning, as I wake up at 5 a.m., it was gone, completely gone. So I have to say, I'm totally impressed with this. However, my steps were mark it, and you notice I didn't mark really, I, I just did two lines. That's what was here. I just did two lines and I washed it with hot water, like almost burn my hand hot water. So those are the disclaimers. Do with that information what you would like. There's lots of ways to mark material, but you know, in a pinch and also again with all those yummy, yummy colors, this might be a new option for you in your sewing space. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Yet another non-sewing sewing notion experience. So please let me know in the comments which of these was your like, oh, that's pretty cool. Or if you have an idea and that I haven't already covered in the other videos, please do let me know in the comments. And as always, I appreciate when you give my video a thumbs up. And of course, be sure to share this with just one of your sewing friends if you found the information valuable. And then most importantly, please do subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can see more things like this. And until I see you next time, I hope you have a creative day. Bye-bye.